Hi, hun buns. This is your girl, Miss Books to You, coming to you today with not an actual book review, but today I will. It's actually an introduction into a discussion I was able to sit in on with Miss Kendra Bell. She just wrote a book called The Battle Scars of the Mind. Do you have what it takes to overcome? The Enemy's Temptation. I have not read the book in its entirety as of yet, but I did want to post the actual discussion I sat in on and actually was able to speak with other women of all backgrounds and ethnicities. And we were able to discuss the stresses that we actually face daily in life, not only being a mother, a wife, a friend, but just being a person in today's society with the different strengths that they have on us. So going forward, you will be seeing and hearing the introduction by Miss Bell in regards to what the book is about. Have a great day. And a lot of people don't know how to adjust. And it takes adjustments to deal with this. You have to take time to be able to process it. And that's where I lost focus. I didn't process my grandmother's death. And a lot of times anxiety's come through because I felt like, oh my God, I didn't. I wasn't there for her. I was trying to build my career. And um, I lost it. And so we're all kind of like on a slipping edge at this point with the floods. It's like, what do I do here? And I love to give people that inspiration to say, you can move on. You can make a difference. And I love it because a lot of times you have hidden talents that you don't know about. And when you go through devastation, you're either going to float or you're going to, you know, get up and move on. And it's those hidden talents that I think we're coming together. We're pulling together as a society that everybody's kind of helping one another now. But, you know, it's kind of like, what do you do in those wee hours of the night to where, oh, my God, i got to take care of my kids. i got to pay my bills. I may lose my house. What is FEMA doing? What about the insurance company? How do you deal with that? And that's when I come in. I tell you, you have to breathe. You have to process. You have to give yourself time to heal. We must heal. And it's just not physically. We have to heal mentally. And once we can take that and learn the applications of dealing with depression and anxiety and going to counselors, I think we can cope. And so that's where we are now. And that's where I am now. I'm really just kind of shedding a light on mental illness and shedding a light on, you know, we have to stop the hate. Because in the end, it really is hate when you talk to your fellow man and you judge them by what they're going through. Because I tell everybody that to seek help is strength. You have to have strength. There's no way around it. You have to have strength. And it's not a weak disease. It is a disease, and people don't see it that way. And I think once we get into government and they can see it that this is an illness and it's a sickness that we're going to go through, that we need money to be able to say, okay, we need our companies over our therapies and a lot of times here in Louisiana a lot of those you know shelters and stuff closed for mental health and I'm like we need that back we definitely need it back and so that's my goal and that's what I kind of wrote the book about and that's where I am now trying to lobby and get them to kind of open that back up and really put money back into it but um, it's been a season for me I can say that much I told you I started in biology totally different writing a book and um the process of writing a book, it took me about two years to write Battle Scars of the Mind. And I wrote the book in a year. But it took me a year to really to go through the editing part because it was my life. And I'm going, oh, my God, how do I, you know, share with this? It's too life? much. Exactly, it's too mm -hmm. much. And so you're like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. But it took a lot, and I, I'm so happy I went through Jerome Publishing to write this book, and they held my hand. And some things I was worried about because, you know, some issues we don't want to discuss. Because it could be, you know, black or white, you know, you're dealing with abortion, and you can step on a lot of toes. And I, I just really wanted to open up. And I've never discussed my views or their views or anyone's views. I hold it, and I let you come up with your assumption, what you think it is, and how we should vote on it. And um, everyone enjoys that chapter the most, which I thought was weird, because I didn't want to put it in the book. I was scared to put it in the book. But they love that chapter, because a lot of people don't talk about it. And when we talk about abortion, you know, I went back into like 16 to 1700 century, 1800s, and how we did with the temple and with Aztecs and everything else. And a lot of times, the same reason we have abortions were the same reason we have now. And a lot of times, they either kids had abnormalities and they didn't want to deal with it. They didn't have the money to be able to raise their kids even back then. 
And I just kind of shed a light that we're going through the same struggles that they did then that we're going through now. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you have one or not. It's like, you know, we got to deal with it and we push on and we move on. And um, the same with anxiety. It's like it's a day-to-day -day challenge that I go through. And just to wake up and say, we're going to push ahead, it makes a difference. And if I can do that, I've made a step towards success. And that's all you want to do, day-to-day -day success. But, yeah, that's the book. <laughs> <laughs> do you all have any questions about it? Well, I have one okay. as a comment, and mm -hmm. let me tell you. For, well, first of all, I think the whole situation in this state is deplorable, and that the first thing to close was the mental health right. centers. And so what we know is people are not paying attention to their own problem, and then they're creating other societal problems. So that's a big major issue, and like you said, the stigma and whatever. But the one thing that I've, I've picked up on is there's a, a local magazine that's published just here in the, in the city, okay. and there's a psychologist that I read his article, and he talked about living in the moment. And I understand where people like you are going when you say that, right. but I have a problem with people that live in the moment and, and are not looking for taking care of tomorrow. So you're spending $2 checking out at the grocery store on a, a drink that you could just drink water and that's, you know, $2 here, $2 there. People are spending little money because they're living in the moment and they're in you know, I, I'm, about now, the future. But, yeah. I'm now dealing, trying to deal with a family and they're, they live in the moment in order to, what they eat, what they drink, they're about to get, they're going to get, they've been uh, put out of housing before and I've been trying to help since February. It's going to happen again. And it's, it, and, and it's not that they have huge resources, but right. the problem is it's not even looking for tomorrow. Right. Now that's and, a difference. Yeah. And so, so I, I encourage people like you to think about how you can give an alternative when right. you say live in the moment. And I understand what you're saying. Right. Right. You're talking about you don't angst over something that may never happen. Right. Exactly. I understand that. Right. No, you're right about that. I um, actually, there's two organizations here. Hope Ministries that's on um, Winborn. And they actually help people that they go from homelessness to actually stability. And they work with inner city um, people to actually become financially stable. And it's just not being able to get a job. It's actually being able to bank accounts. Understand their money. Exactly, understand right. their money. Right. And so that's, yeah, you're right about that. On that but area. I think also is how people perceive it because we can sit even with just us three here right. we can sit here but everybody can come with a different outcome with yeah. what she said yeah. right. so living a moment for me may be you know get my finances together living a mm -hmm. moment may be for you get your health together mm -hmm. for her it may be something totally different yeah. right. so i just yeah. it might be the way that they are perceiving exactly. li you know living well, in the moment but what i'm saying is unfortunately and I can go on forever, and I'm not no, going to. <laughs> we live in a society that's a throwaway society. I, I grew up with family that made sure that you thought about the future, right. and maybe they angst too much over it, but, but I'm not in that mode because they taught that to me. So the throwaway society, I want it, I want it now. There's too many of those kinds of things being delivered by the media. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I gotta have this now. very expensive phone. I mean, I'm gonna tell you something that was really funny. Some lady was wanting to tell me, and I got any, can't even remember, and she was older than me. And, 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 you know, no, but what's funny, because I'm old, but, but, what's, but, but what was funny about it, she wanted to know a phone, and I said, uh, I'm not wired, and she looked at me for a minute, and she realized what I was saying. I don't have, you know, email, whatever. Right. Fancy phones, I have a flip phone. Right. But she finally said to me, she asked me another question, and then she said, do you have a phone? And I said, yeah, yeah. I got a flip phone. <laughs> As long as you have your source of okay, communication, yeah. what's yeah. it? Y'all level of importance is yeah. different because in our, with your flip phone, you don't have to pay the uh, process 
that I have to pay for the, the plan that I have to have in order to have yeah, right, the, exactly. the smartphone. And, and, and so actually, you're smarter than me exactly. with the smartphone. No, 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 but, no, no, but what I'm trying to say is I don't need to keep up with Joneses, and that's part of right. the thing of mental health, right. too. Right. People are angsting over things that... You know, a roof over your head, food in your mouth, uh, sh you know, safe, comfortable shelter, you know, being with family, friends, right. whatever. Right. But, but I mean, it's all those kinds of things, and we're back to the deal of unless we can have return to having local mental health units that people can talk about these things, we're going to... I've been carrying this person to, to the... Um, Gus Young facility for, for medical help because she needs all kind of medical right. help. And the North Clinic also for medical help. And it's bizarre mm -hmm. in terms of what ought to be done not only for Versus physical help done. but right. the mental health. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then you found a lot of therapists now. They